Hey everyone, December is in the books, 2021 is in the books. So I wanna take a couple minutes to go over our trade results for the month of December and, uh, and jump into some statistics for 2021, uh, uh, the full year as well. So starting with the month of December, uh, really nice month, over uh, $4,800 in profits, 24 winning trades, just four losing trades. Uh, the four losers, we had a uh, an iron condor in Natty Gas. We were actually up on this, almost getting ready to close it out, and then it just fell out of bed. So we ended up taking a loss on that one. So that was unfortunate. Uh, a couple little losses on weekly double calendars, and the rest, uh, some nice winners, some uh, max profits on some iron ducks. Uh, one right there, one right there, one right there. Uh, one right there as well, and, and uh, some other big big winners on some weekly double calendars. So, uh, really great month. Uh, not showing the day trading in December just because I don't, there's only a handful of days that I was really focused on our traditional strategies. I've been testing a lot with our navigation trend trading uh, on the day trading and just kind of refining that. So we'll get back to posting our day trades, but. I ended up in the green. I think it was a little over $2,500 for the month of December total. But again, I'm still kind of testing. And so I'll, uh, I'll get back to uh, reporting on, um, on the day trades uh, here going into next year. So the other thing I want to talk about is I wanted to look at some of the strategies um, year, uh, for, the, for the year of 2021, starting with uh, let's look at short strangles, our, our most profitable strategy, a little over 7,900 in profits on short strangles. And we really didn't do too many in the beginning of the year. Uh, about mid year, we started doing some of these long duration short strangles on the micro S and P, uh, futures, and we'll continue to do that. But the only loser we had on the short strangles was a little $72 and 50 cent loser. Uh, so really nice profits on the short strangles. I'm going to go over these strategies, then I'm going to talk about a little bit of a game plan for 2022. Uh, Iron Ducks didn't end up as profitable as I would have hoped, uh, but I did break it down to 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 uh, show a little bit of segmentation. Uh, so I, I looked at, okay, how would we perform on the S&P? And so that's SPX, SPY, and we did a couple on the ES future. So all the S&P 500, a little over 4,400 on those ducks. NASDAQ profitable, so that's QQQ, uh, almost $1,000 in profit there. Russell, a little in the red. Obviously, the Russell is, A, it's a little bit more volatile, but B, did not have the same price action, uh, mostly to the upside, as we saw with the S&P and NASDAQ, so that makes sense. Now, will I stop trading the Russell? No, I will not. Um, that A, that's not a huge sample size, even though it is a full year. Uh, the Russell will continue to be um, one of the top, but we'll be a little bit more selective because it is a little bit more volatile than the S&P. And there's nothing wrong with not trading RUT or IWM as well. But um, statistically, over time, it still performed very well. It was a really good performer uh, for you know other accounts as well as last year, over the last few years. And so I'm not going to stop trading it just because it was red for the year. Uh, but certainly, and I did a lot more trades in the S&P, but uh, certainly the S&P performed a lot better on ducks this year. I also broke out earnings iron ducks. So red on the earnings iron ducks by about a thousand bucks. And then I also broke out stocks, non-earnings. So you can see we did some in Amazon and Tesla and CMG and a couple other stocks. Uh, and so in the red there. 84% uh, win rate, 83 winners total, 16 losers. So a good win rate. We always set these up with about 84, 85% uh, probability of success. So it's amazing how that always plays out. Um, so really the focus going forward, it, you know, we'll still continue to, to primarily focus on the S&P 500 with these ducks, but I'm not going to shy away from doing uh, selective stocks and I'm not going to shy away from doing selective Russell trades. I probably will not be doing, at least in the alerts portfolio, won't be doing uh, earnings iron ducks just because they're so dependent on that one day move. And uh, 
for based on the size of the alerts portfolio, which is about 60,000, it just, you know, I just, I think it's, a, you're taking a little bit too much risk. I'm still going to trade those because I did have a positive return in my other bigger account. Um, and over time there is a positive expected outcome. Uh, but for the alerts portfolio, I, I will probably not be doing any earnings ducks in 2022 on the weekly double calendars. These, uh, were profitable, uh, but just by a little bit, uh, 39 winners, 24 losers, 62% win rate with, which again, the win rate holds true. It's, it's right there, uh, based on a couple things that I think hurt the performance. One, I let a couple losers go too far. You know, that rut minus 740, that that's too big of a loss. I let it get out of, uh, let it get out of hand. There's a couple other losers here that were bigger than I should have let them go. That one there and a couple others, but so that would have, uh, that would have helped. We will still continue to doing these. If implied volatility gets low, we will go back to our traditional 721 DTE instead of the shorter duration. Uh, so we'll be doing some more testing around that, but we will continue to do weekly double calendars. And then if you look at just double calendars and double diagonals, uh, so this is primarily on stocks, not our traditional weekly, uh, has had a nice positive outcome there. Uh, almost $1,200. Uh, and that includes, I was doing some uh, ratio double diagonals earlier in the year, took a decent loss on Facebook there. So won't be doing any more of those. Um, but overall, we'll be having a focus on on really looking for additional uh, double diagonals, double calendars in 2022. Pre-earnings trades uh, also did well, didn't do very many at all in the beginning of the year and then started jumping in, into these in June. Uh, didn't have any losers on the pre-earnings trades uh, and a decent performance. So we'll be uh, have kind of a renewed focus on doing more of these pre-earnings, double diagonals, double calendars. Uh, this was a single calendar. Uh, so nice, uh, decent profit there. And then another big focus for 2022 is these VXX trades. Kind of got away from doing those for whatever reason, but... Uh, in 2022, we are going to have a, a a really big focus on selling volatility on volatility spikes. So you can see we only had a handful of these: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four of them were in December. Uh, but nice profits overall, and uh, and we'll continue to focus those on tw uh, in 2022. So those are those are uh, some of our profitable trades. I didn't break down every exact directional trade or other strategy that we only did, you know, two or three of. Uh, but I do want to focus on a couple that did not do so well in 2021, namely post earnings trades. And this is a post earnings long call or post earnings short put vertical, as I as I mentioned here. Now. I'm still going to do these because over time they do have a very nice positive expected outcome. What you'll see here is in May, we kind of loaded up uh, all, all around the same time and the market tanked and we got actually absolutely smoked on those. So that, that made up a, pretty much the entire year as far as the, the, the loss total. Uh, so we'll still be trading post earnings trades as post earnings, uh, short put verticals, uh, post earning long calls in some cases. But we're going to be a little bit more selective, and 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 really, the more the the biggest thing is not not load up uh, all in one time where we can get smoked if the market reverses on us. Uh, really, just be a little bit more, you know, one here, one here, have one or two on at a time. So that that'll be the goal with post earnings trades in 2022. And then another one that that didn't do well is the vertigo. Um, Part of this is just the time of entry. You can see we started off doing really well in January, uh, and then and then we had a, and then we had a, again we had a couple big losses that these are just way too big. These are trades where I left the trade on too long and didn't cut losses, uh, and just those two trades there, eight hundred, sixteen hundred. That's twenty four hundred dollars. Uh, well, there's the annual annual total right there, minus twenty four hundred on Vertigos. I also included long iron condors because I did a few of those. So the, the risk profile on Vertigos and long iron condors is pretty similar. So I kind of grouped those together. We'll still do some of these long iron condors and Vertigos. Uh, we'll just be a a little bit more selective and b make sure we're cutting our losses uh, 
you know, fair, uh, a lot quicker, uh, one day to expiration at the latest. And we put these on with, with longer duration. We will, uh, we'll cut them even sooner, you know, two or three days to expiration. So post earnings trades and vertigos, those were a couple that did not do well. Game plan for 2022. Uh, so number one, we're going to do more short, uh, more short strangles, more premium selling after IV spikes. We didn't do near enough of this. And obviously our short strangles were our most profitable strategy. And so we'll continue to do that. And we'll continue to ladder into our long duration short strangles like we've been doing uh, uh, during the second half of 2021. Uh, Iron Ducks will continue to do most of our ducks on the S&P 500, SPX, SPY, be a little bit more selective on RUT IWM. And like I said, stay away from earnings ducks. It's just, it's too dependent on a one day move. And with the account size of the alerts portfolio, we'll probably just shy away from those. Double calendars and double diagonals. We'll continue to do our weekly double calendars in SPX RUT uh, with a focus on cutting losers fast. And then uh, more pre-earnings, double calendars and double diagonals. And we're also going to be doing some more longer duration uh, calendar and double calendar, calendar, calendarized trades in stocks and indices. We've been doing some testing around some longer duration stuff. And so we'll be adding uh, some of those in as well. And then I mentioned VXX really have a focus on selling volatility after every IV spike got some uh, in our VIX course, we talk about this, uh, but I've got some uh, pretty, uh, some additional criteria that we'll be looking at. So we'll, we'll look for more of those VXX short trades uh, in 2022. Uh, post earnings trades, like I said, we'll be a little bit more selective on the entries and we'll, and we'll hold minimal positions at one time, you know, just one or two as opposed to loading up uh, like we did in May of 2021. And then Vertigo and Long Iron Condors, a little bit more selective on entries, focus on cutting losers faster. And then these are not part of the alerts, but we've got our navigation trend trading, which has been uh, uber successful. So I'm going to continue with the high vol volume of trades uh, on uh, options on stocks. And then I also have a separate account where I trade just futures on those. So I'll continue to do that. We Every day we post the, the trade opportunities in our Discord channel for, for those. So we'll continue to keep going on that. And then on day trading, uh, towards the end of the year, got a lot more selective on Mighty 90s and Runners. So we'll continue that. And then uh, going to continue with what I call the navigation trend trading ping pong trades, primarily using futures. And we have not released a class on this yet. So that's going to be coming out uh, with more specific details and criteria here in the first quarter of 2022. So other things we're doing in 2022, we are going to be updating the calendars course. Uh, we are going to be coming out with a couple additional courses, which I won't talk about here, uh, but we've got a, a couple of really awesome strategies that we'll be looking to roll out in 2022 as well. So really look forward to 2022. Uh, 2021 was profitable, but not not as profitable as I would have liked. Uh, so really look forward to, to uh, engaging in, in some of the uh, new things we learned. You know, th this is the beautiful thing about trading. I've been trading for 20 plus years and there are things that I learned in 2021 uh, that are that are going to continue to elevate my trading. And so that's the beautiful thing about trading is you're always continuing to learn. You, you're you never going to have it all figured out. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, it's good for those who like challenges. If you don't like challenges, well, maybe trading's not for you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I wish everybody a great trading year in 2022 and look forward to uh, guiding you along the way with the focus that we have. Talk to you soon.